This is a brilliant conversation you're about to see between Dr. Frank Turek and a student about our brain. If our brain is a product of evolution, which is random and accidental, why would you trust it to tell you anything about reality or anything else? It doesn't make any sense. We use our brain to do wonderful things. We use our brain to tell us what's true and what's false. But let's see what Dr. Frank has to say, and I'll tell you what I think in the back end. Take a look. Why couldn't we trust their minds if they're just made of uh, matter? Well, because if physics drive everything and there's no immaterial realm, if we're mind, then how can physics drive conclusions that are true? They might drive conclusions that lead to survival, but not true. Like right now, we're having a conversation, right? Yes. What, what physical laws are creating your response to me and my response to you? Uh, I guess all of the um, atoms and particles and all the laws of nature just wrapped up together in a ultra complex way. Well, yeah, but how do they come up with these unique questions? How, you know, we're having a conversation here. Are, are, are we saying that different chemicals come into existence when I say pink elephant and different, uh, different chemicals come up in your mind when you say white rhinoceros? Yeah. yeah and they, that would be more of a miracle than saying we just have minds. Would it? Yeah. Because it's like, a, uh, I guess, think of like a, a computer. Uh -huh. like, like we have like the screen of our eyes, basically. But, like, you can't just, like, break open a computer and see, oh, look, there's the pink elephant that's stored in there. That's but right. You can go onto the computer, type pink elephant, and there's the pink elephant. Right, but this computer's designed. And yeah. that's why we can trust it. If a, if, if, if a computer was not designed, would you trust it? I mean, I guess if... I guess I'm having a hard time thinking of what that would even look like. That's right. But. That's my point. That's oh, yeah. Lewis's point. Yeah, yeah. Why, we can trust our minds. We know that. Mm -hmm. That's the effect. The question is, what caused that? I guess evolution. But even if evolution were true, what laws that are driving evolution, where do they come from? I guess I don't know. Yeah, see, that's, that's, what, that's what Lewis is saying here. That when you get back to it, if the thoughts that you have are merely the byproducts of some atoms within my skull, then you should have no reason to trust those thoughts. But you can trust your thoughts, so you ought not reason back to an undesigned mind. You ought to reason back to a designed mind. In fact, here's, here's what John Lennox asked some scientist friends of his who are atheists. He says, how do, you, how do you do science? And they say, oh, I got this machine. And he goes, no, no I'm not talking about a machine in your office or your lab. How do you do science up here? And they say, you mean with my, they start to say mind and they catch themselves and say brain. Mm -hmm. And, and he, they, he, they say brain and he says, yeah, with your brain. What's the history of your brain? How did your brain get here? And they say, oh, my brain is the product of random forces that didn't have its end in mind. And then Lennox says, and you trust it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, why would you trust such a thing? Why would you trust a computer if such a computer could come into existence out of nothing well, if it wasn't designed. It hasn't let me down before, or it has, but not. Right, because you already have the effect, but you need to reason back to the cause, right? Your mind is an effect. So what caused your mind is the question. Laws kind of which do the to... same thing over and over again. Physics does the same thing over and over again. How does it give us this diverse variety of conversation we're having right now? The universe is a very big place. Uh, it would at least be a little logical that certain conversations would happen between uh, intelligent beings. Right, but where do intelligent beings come from? That's the question. See, physics does the same thing over and over again. Where, do, where does the genetic code come from? Where do, this is a software program, right? Programs come from programmers. In all our experience, that's where it comes from. So. That's where yeah. we're, we have an effect, this software program. The question is, what caused it? Why would we say natural laws, which do the same thing over and over again, which can't produce this specified complexity we see in a code? Is every star the same? Uh, no, every, every star is not the same, but stars aren't specified and complex. Specified complexity is like a program, like a, like a pattern, like a sentence, like this is specified complexity.
You would never see this. Let, let me just give you a simple example. If you're walking along the beach and you see John loves Mary in the sand, you don't think the waves made that. You don't think crabs came out of the water and made that message, right? You say that message requires a mind. Well, if that message, John loves Mary, requires a mind, then what happens if you find a message 3.5 billion letters long? That's got to require a mind too. That's well, what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, but to that, I would say you could see like a skull in the rocks and say, oh, that's um, a, a message of an omen of death or whatever. And even though it was just the uh, waves washing up on the shore that created you're, this. You're, yeah, we're not saying you can't find things that look odd in nature that, oh, that looks like it could be Grandfather Mountain. Looks like the way that stone comes out. Looks like it's his nose. OK, but that's that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about specified complexity. Is if Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? Uh. A, um, yeah, yeah. The fact that atheists trust their brain for everything is evidence that they know God exists, but they choose to suppress that fact because an atheist is not an atheist because of lack of evidence. No, we have plenty of evidence. Just look at the universe. Order and design of the cosmos point to a designer. You don't get order out of chaos. That don't happen. An atheist is an atheist because of the heart. They are running away from God. If they acknowledge God exists, they no longer can live the life that they desire. I know some atheists is going to go crazy on the comment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How dare you say something like that? I'm an atheist because there's no evidence for your God. But you know, some of you don't like the idea of a God that created the universe. My hope is you have a, a change of mind and see your need for God and your salvation through Jesus Christ. All right, this is all I have for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.